Hello everybody, I'm Pearl. I'm Bob. And this is Tinker. And we are just passing through. And this is our next exit. Come and join us. And you'd be joining us in the back patio here at our house in Yuma, Yuma Arizona. Arizona. But it's going to be the last time you join us here for a couple of months. We're headed north. Got to get out of some of this heat. Yeah, it's pushing up in the 90s and I'm sure we'll see 100. Well, we won't see it because we we're going to be gone. We'll be gone. <laughs> in fact, we were going to go to Joshua Tree, uh, California. That's about 150 miles north and west of here. But Pearl pointed out that it's going to be 90 or 100 degrees up there. There, and we wouldn't have air conditioning if we stayed there. Yeah, we were going to boondock just outside the park. And so that's not our best idea, <laughs> best plan. So uh, everybody's headed north in Arizona and Southern California. It's getting hot down here. It and is. so we decided Palm Springs is just 20 miles or so away. So there's a thousand trails that are called uh, Palm Springs, thousand trails, something like that. So we called yesterday to see if they got reservations for tomorrow night in bingo. They got plenty of reservations. Everybody's Thank headed north. Goodness. <laughs> so we'll be there for this weekend and we'll have the air conditioner running. And then we're going to head up to Yosemite. Yes. And that ought to be nice and cool. So we'll be, uh, we need to be sure and pack some long sleeve shirts and a jacket. And jackets. We can find them. Uh, no problem. And then Lake Tahoe and then South Dakota, Montana, Wyoming. Idaho. We just got a great summer set up. And we're going to meet some friends up there, huh? In the Badlands, absolutely. Yeah. Computer Joe. Yeah, he's coming from Florida. I think he's leaving here in about a week. And Jeff and Lori. Jeff and Lori. Can't wait to see them. It's been forever. Yeah, they left Tucson a week or so ago, headed to Tennessee, Tennessee. to see family. And I think they got caught up in some of that nasty, nasty I weather. I hope not. I hope they got through it. Yeah. And then, but they're gonna, we're going to all meet there in Custer, South Dakota here in a couple of weeks. Yes. So hopefully you'll follow along with us. We, as you know, we've got solar up on the roof. We've got a number of solar panels. I just got a new uh, solar uh, portable power station from EchoFlow. So we're going to be doing a review on that here in a couple of weeks. It, look, it looks pretty exciting. And we're going to check it all out. Can we do it with our lead acid batteries? Everybody else has got lithium. Everybody that we're traveling with has got lithium batteries. And they're saying we're crazy to try this with our old <laughs> golf cart batteries. And we may be having to buy some new ones. I don't know. But uh, hopefully you'll join us this summer. We're taking off today, heading to uh, Palm Springs. Going to spend the weekend, and we're heading up to uh, Yosemite. Yes. So follow along. We'll see you guys when we get to Palm Springs. Let's go, baby. All right. Let's go, Tank. Let's go, little girl. We're going this way. Let's go. Well, as you can see, it was pretty hot. We made it to Palm Springs. It didn't hit 100, but it, it was up to 99 uh, just about every afternoon. We met several subscribers. We met one couple, Janice and Larry, that was at our rally. We got to visit with them quite a bit and several other folks that watch our channel. So we had a lot of fun there at uh, Palm Springs. We did take a day and drive out to Joshua Tree, the national park. And I'm glad we didn't boondock. It, uh, there were several spots we could have got in there, but it was just too hot. We entered from the south and headed up north, and apparently there's like two or three different environments there in Joshua Tree down in the south. It's mostly just desert, rocks and cactus and sagebrush. And then it takes about an hour and a half to drive all the way through it, but you get up in about the middle and there was this big area, several acres, five or 10 acres of, I think it's called Chola, Chola Cactus Garden. And that was pretty neat. There's a little bit more uh, plant life and stuff. But then after about an hour's drive, we got up to the north. And that's what Joshua Tree National Park is all about. They've got these huge rocks, boulders, not rocks, but boulders, and the Joshua trees. So we can't take Tinker uh, walking on the trails in national parks, but, but we found several places we could walk around. It was well worth the drive, getting all up there. It reminded you of being in an old cowboy movie. It's like a cowboy set. And there was just the Joshua trees and bushes and then just smooth, barren dirt. So well worth the drive. But we were looking to find some cooler weather. So we headed out a day or two early, headed on up to Yosemite. And we left early in the morning because it's our first climb. As you know, we've got some heating issues with our diesel engine in the RV. And we think we've got all that resolved, but this is our first real test driving out of Southern California headed up to uh, Yosemite. 
So we wanted to do that in the cool of the morning and we also wanted to get to our overnight stop before those winds came up. And then around 2,000 feet on that second mountain, that's about halfway up, we hit 190 again. So that seemed pretty consistent. And then when we finally got to the top up around 4,000 feet, the temperature got up to about 210, which really is acceptable to us. That's not bad at all. And it cooled right down as soon as we went over the peak. But our main concern at this point is getting to Peggy Sue's diner and getting parked and set up before those winds got in. They were forecast to be up in the 40s with gusts up I don't even know how high and they got every bit of that forecast it was pretty rough up there's there. a couple of restaurants there's a go in sit down restaurant that was jam-packed full busy but in the back there's a pizza restaurant so we got the pizza to go and just like tom had said it was just a very pleasant surprise huge pizza had everything on it so that was nice except for the wind we ended up pulling our slides in it was so bad we got done that night and we headed on up to Yosemite. Get a little cool weather, I think it's supposed to be in the mid 60s or something, and down in the high 30s at night. So that just sounded like a dream. So we headed that way. But first we made a quick little stop at a uh, Boondockers Welcome site. This is our first time at trying our Boondockers Welcome membership. And we stopped at a little family farm about halfway between Peggy Sue's Diner and Yosemite's National Park. And it worked out really good. It's maybe 15 miles out of the way. We got to back in. It was a real easy site, plenty of room, and a nice peaceful night. And then the next morning, we're headed on up to Yosemite. And as we got close, the last, oh, I don't know, 10 miles, 20 miles, is real curvy switchback kind of roads. And even had one sign that said, uh, uh, if you're longer than 30 feet from your kingpin to your axle, rear axle, they don't advise going up that road. That it's just real big switchback. So how you like your little roads, baby? I don't like my little roads, Bobby. Not so much? Not so much. You anxious to get to Yosemite? I am. Yeah. Let's get there and get her done. Okay. Get there, relax. Keep the wheels rolling. Yes, sir, Bob. Like the little roads now, baby. I don't like the little roads, Bob. Not so much. Not so much. Not even a little. As a lot of you know, Pearl don't like these skinny mountain roads at all. But she's doing great on the skinny roads, on the curvy roads, and even this one here is warning the cars to turn off their air conditioners for the next five miles because even the cars will heat up on a hot day. But but what really gets her going crazy is knuckleheads like this guy passing on this curve. Totally insane. So we decided to pull over and unhook the car. And that way I'd go ahead and drive the coach. Pearl can follow up with the car. We only got maybe 10 miles or so to go. And we'll get up to Yosemite and get to relax. So it sounds like a great plan. And that's where we're going. And just like in a lot of our RV adventures, there's quite often a surprise waiting for us at the end of the road. And today is no exception. So we got the car unhooked and Pearl drove in on up to Yosemite. I drove the coach and the coach did great. It made it up the rest of the mountain. It got up to maybe 215, uh, but no real issues at all. 215 is fine and dandy. And it has a little bit of extra power even going up the hills, and I think that's cause our fan is not running as much and as hard as it used to. And once we got to their campground, I went ahead and backed into our site, Pearl brought the car up and parked it, and we got to talking. I was all tickled and happy cause the coach had done so good, but Pearl says, well, we got a problem with the car. The transmission is shifting like you're using a sledgehammer to shift it and uh, it's really a concern. I got in it and drove a couple of miles and you could tell there really something's wrong. 
The next day I went ahead and hopped in it, drove about 80 miles to, I think it's Oakdale, and had the transmission fluid changed in it. I had read that it'll get old, uh, transmission fluid will get old, and you, you need to refresh it occasionally. We've got about 60,000 miles driving the car, and we've towed it about 50,000 miles. So we tried that, and it seemed like it worked. The first 20 miles, or my, maybe the first 50 miles back from Oakdale, it uh, just kept getting smoother every time it would shift. It was just better and better and really doing good. But about halfway home, I had about 40 miles left, it did a real hard shift, really like I slammed on the brakes almost, and I pulled over the side of the road just to kind of see if everything was okay. And reverse was gone it wouldn't back up at all to go forward just fine and it still shifted just fine going forward but you put it in reverse step on the gas and it just sit there so I made it all the way back we decided to go ahead and pack everything up and the next day we headed to Reno so it's almost 300 miles from Yosemite up to Reno we went ahead and went hooked the car up to the coast and headed straight out to Sacramento and hit 80 and then come back over we uh, just didn't want to take any chances on the little bitty mountain roads of something happening. So we got on a big road so we'd have a place to pull out if something happened. We made it just fine. And the RV uh, went up, I think it's 7,200 foot at the summit. And it made that one no problem at all. And so we're really happy with the coach and it's uh, overheating problem. Seems to we've made a lot of progress. And I think we're pretty comfortable taking it almost anywhere. But now we got a problem with the car. So, here we are at Sparks Marina RV Park in Sparks, Sparks Nevada. Nevada. Just right outside, outside of Reno. Of Reno. <laughs> we started that with some uh, great plans. We did. They got interrupted a little I'm bit. I'm glad we made it to lease the Sparks with <laughs> both the RV and the car. Exactly. So let me kind of catch you all up to date. We don't really know what we're going to do yet. <laughs> we made it to the uh, campground here. We towed the car all the way down here with no problem. From Yosemite. From Yosemite, 275 miles. The coach did great. Did really good. Yeah, it didn't heat up at all. Uh, but when we pulled in here, right, right about here, we have a thing called an aqua hot. It's this unit down here. And that heats our water. And the aqua hot heats our water. It heats our coach. It'll uh, preheat the engine to start it on a cold morning. Well, when we pulled in, apparently we leaked a whole bunch. It's got red antifreeze in it. And apparently it leaked out a whole bunch of fluid, a gallon or two or three, up at the office where we registered. We got pulled in here and somebody from the office saw it. So they followed us down here. We left a big puddle of antifreeze and it's all wet underneath the coach. So the car's messed up. We got it in the shop. It's $5,000 for a rebuilt transmission and it'll be done in about a week. We got hopefully. It. Well, hopefully. <laughs> These aqua hots are really cool, but they're real expensive. There's only Very. one aqua hot technician in this whole Reno Sparks area and he's booked up about two weeks but he told me over the phone, I sent him pictures and told him what all was going on. And he said, we have a cracked boiler and it's $10,000 to repair. To repair or replace? To repair it. You could get a used boiler and put it inside here, but basically $10,000, yeah. which is a little overwhelming for us. Uh, I asked him, would he just take a little bit of time and come over and look at it to confirm that just so we know that's what it is. He said he would, but it's $200 to do a service call just to come over. And that seemed a little foolish. So we was about ready to just pack up our marbles and head back to Yuma and maybe give up the RV lifestyle. That's, that'd be $15,000 and we just now started our season. Yes. But the good news is there's always uh, cups the half full news, and half empty. <laughs> the real good news is Bob is mechanically inclined. 
So he got to thinking about issues and how to fix the various issues with this. Yeah, not to not to do clickbait or hold you into expense. We got that fixed for under $500. Yes. As it turns out, the engine has pink antifreeze in it as well. And the engine preheat that runs through the back of the aqua hot has a little circulation pump and that's where it was leaking. So it's leaking engine antifreeze right here underneath the aqua hot. And that's why he was confused. The pictures and stuff I sent him, it sure like, looked like what he said was right. But it's our circulation pump that's leaking. I ordered the new circulation pump, I just got it. And the engine was five gallons, it holds 10 gallons of antifreeze, it's five gallons down. And it ran cool all the way over the mountain. It started leaking. We pulled in to get fuel about two miles from here at Sierra Sid's, the TA truck stop. And apparently when we shut the engine down, it was about ready to start leaking. It must have started right then and it leaked. I looked in the backup camera and you could see a little bit there in the uh, bay as I pulled out and then you could see it Big time. at the office and you could see it a line coming all the way to the campground. So we filled up our engine with antifreeze. I circumvented that pump. I bought, I've got the new pump but I hadn't installed it yet. I just plumbed around it and so everything works great. The engine's not making fluid, it's still running uh, cool, yes. and the aqua hot is working, it's just we can't preheat the engine, which we don't need to do that particularly anyway. Exactly. So with a little luck, all is good, we'll get the car back next Friday. Please. We'll get to leave Reno uh, Friday, Friday when we get the car back and get up to Tahoe for a couple of weeks, and then we're going to head to South Dakota. So yes. all is well. And uh, we still got a little bit of a couple of dollars left in our emergency fund that hopefully we don't spend. Oh, please. Yeah. So, if you're all caught up, we'll probably put out a new video once we get up to Lake Tahoe and get the car up and let you know uh, just how that ended up. But I think we're good to go. So, what was feeling like a, what would you call it? It was just a lot of weight on our shoulder. Overwhelming nightmare. Now we're tickled to this. Oh, and I ordered a new tow bar. Here's our old one. Not sure what we're gonna do with it, but it's just all way loose and sloppy. We've towed our car, I think I might have mentioned in the video, but We've, our car's a 2013 Lincoln and we've driven it 60,000 miles, but we've towed it a little over 50,000 miles. So we also bought a new tow bar, just like that transmission went out from all that, I'm sure it's from all the towing. Uh, our tow bar is getting real loose and sloppy and we decided to do a little nice and stiff now. Yeah, and it just, just loose and sloppy wore out. So we ordered us a new tow bar and we'll install it that's another thousand bucks, but uh, I think we're good to go. So that pretty well covers it, right? So far. <laughs> Until we see you guys again next time, keep the wheels rolling. Stay safe. We'll see you at the next exit. Bye-bye, <laughs> <Bye -bye, laughs> folks. Down and put that on top of it. Like, I'm going to do it.